I gave the exact same coding challenge to ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude, and one of them completely failed and another one surprised me. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one of these AI tools is worth your time for coding projects. Plus, I'll share the exact techniques I discovered to get the best results from AI. So for this challenge, I wanted to do something that was easy for us to measure success, but also difficult enough to code. So I decided to ask AI to code a simple trading strategy in TradeStation's easy language. Now, if you don't know, TradeStation is a broker, but they also have a platform that allows you to trade automated trading strategies using what they call easy language. Now, outside of the algo and trading community, TradeStation probably isn't known as well, but that's actually a good thing. It'll make this coding challenge interesting. Now to up the stakes, I'll also ask AI to take some code from easy language and then to convert it into something called NinjaScript, which essentially is C sharp, but for NinjaTrader, it's also used for algorithmic trading. And to get started, let me show you the prompt we're gonna use. So here's the prompt. Now my first step when I'm writing any prompt is I always try to provide a little bit of context. And then I try to create a persona. I've actually found that this gives me much better results. Now you'll also see in the prompt, I'm gonna give it a reference to the platforms that we'll be using, which hopefully will allow the AI to focus on the documentation that is publicly available and relates to that platform. After that, I give it the details of the strategy. So for this one, strategy is very simple. We're gonna buy when the price closes above the 10 and the 50 period moving averages with a stop that is set to two times the average true range below the last low. And then we're gonna want it to sell when price closes below the 10 period moving average. So now I'm using terms that are known in both platforms. They're known in the trading community and I've given it a persona which should help it to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. So the first up, we're gonna start with ChatGPT. So after putting in the prompt and taking the code that it's generated and putting it straight into easy language, the first issue that ChatGPT has is it's using the set stop price incorrectly. So of course, in order to have some improvements, I gave it a prompt to let it know that this part is wrong. Now, something that's important to know is these scripts are called every time a new bar closes. So if we have a 15 minute chart, that means it's called every 15 minutes. This is important because with a stop, typically once it's placed, you do not move it unless you're doing a trailing stop, but I didn't ask for a trailing stop. So once it tried to fix the stop logic, it actually put it in a place that would have been updated every single bar, which is completely incorrect. So I attempted to give it some more prompts to fix it, but honestly, after a while, I just said, okay, it's not gonna figure this out. So after I gave up on the stop logic, I was able to get it to a place where it could actually compile, and then we can actually put it to see if it'll generate a result. So as you can see, the script does work and it does generate some trades, but the stop doesn't work. Next, we have Claude, and this is when something unexpected happened. The first thing Claude did was it tried to add a way to visualize the indicators, which would have been nice, but if you look at the actual documentation, you can't have visualizations within a script in easy language. So it was simple, I asked Claude to fix this, and then I actually noticed something. Now, if we just forget about the stop for a second, Claude didn't actually code what I asked for. It added additional logic that checked whether the 10 moving average was also above the 50 moving average. Now, for a trend following system, this could be a good idea, but the problem is that's not what I asked for. And if you are somebody who doesn't know how to code at all and you're using the system to generate code for your trading algorithms, that would be a problem because you may have a strategy that you believe should work and then you go and you back test it and forward test it and it gives you completely different results than you're expected. Now with trading, especially algorithmic trading, you have to be as precise as possible. So this addition is actually kind of dangerous. Now, if we bring back in the stop logic, again, this one struggled to get the stop logic correct. What Claude did is it only referenced the price, but it didn't actually add any logic to trigger and exit out of a position once the price was hit. So I really thought Claude would have been a little bit better here, but now we're gonna to have to take a look at Gemini. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm a big fan of Gemini's deep research. I think it's excellent. Yes, there are always problems with hallucinations, but if you have a general idea of the material, it is an 
excellent tool to use. So I had super high expectations with this one. Now with Gemini, the first red flag, Gemini used a reserve word. That's a no-no. Essentially, there are some words in code that you, you just can't use. It's like going to a restaurant, seeing a table that's reserved, and deciding you're just gonna sit there anyways. It's a big no-no. So I gave it a prompt and asked it to correct the logic and wanted to test to see if it worked. And now if you can see, we're actually getting the exact same logic that we were getting with ChatGPT. Now the last step, let's see if we can fix the stop logic. So this is where things just completely went haywire. It's making changes that cause new errors. And I'm gonna be honest, at this point, I'm just giving up on Gemini. But here's where things got really interesting. When I asked it to take some working easy script code and translate it into Ninja script, one AI completely changed its approach and the results flipped everything that I expected. So let's bring it back to ChatGPT. I gave it this prompt with the code and then took the results that it gave me and it had several errors. So of course, you know the process. We let it know what the errors are and see if it can fix it. Now, because ChatGPT did pretty well in the first test, I was expecting it to do really well here, but it was only able to fix some of the errors. So I gave it one last try and it finally was able to do it and the script was able to run. This was actually a lot more challenging than I expected. You know, the initial challenge, it was pretty close to what I asked for, except for the stop, but all of them had issues with the stop logic. But when I asked it to translate things, that's where things really fell apart. So now we're gonna move it to Claude. Claude had one error. And after giving it the prompt, you can see everything runs perfectly. This was the smoothest so far. And as you can see, it generates trade. So that means it works. This one is, this honestly is perfect. It's excellent. Now we need to try Gemini. So at first glance, I noticed a major error, but I'm not gonna hold it against Gemini. It's because the namespace was the exact same as one that already existed. So I'm gonna change the namespace to fix that error. After I fix that error, to my surprise, there were no other errors in the code. So now let's actually run the test to make sure it runs. And as you can see, there's no trades. So I did the same thing that I did with Claude and with ChatGPT. I asked it to fix itself. And instead of fixing itself, it started to add all of these print functions. So that way you can kind of figure out where the mistakes are and help it. I, honestly, I'm gonna call this a complete failure. So there's a couple things that I learned from this experiment. It's better to break your prompts into smaller bite-sized pieces and have AI work on one problem at a time. If I were to do this again, I would probably test separating the logic, maybe doing the entry logic first and then doing the stop logic after. When debugging, you gotta give it as much context as possible. Give it the exact error. You could even give it the line number that might help it as well. You've gotta include anything that you think might be helpful as if you were speaking to somebody else. The last thing that I learned, while AI is amazing, there are still limitations. The best approach is to learn about the tools so that way you can identify what the problems could be. So having some domain knowledge about easy language, Ninja Script, whatever the case may be, will help you to get better and better results. So after all this, which tool is the best AI for coding? Well, obviously coming in third place is Gemini. There was just way too many problems. You know, it might get better, but right now I probably wouldn't use it for coding. Second place, this is kind of where I had a little bit of a challenge. You know, in the first test, ChatGPT was able to code something that was, you know, similar to what we asked for. But in the second phase in translation, Claude did significantly better. So when I balance this, I think overall, I'm gonna place ChatGPT in second place, which means that first place has to go out to Claude. All around, I think, Right now, based on this test, it's probably the best coding assistant that you can have. So I'm planning on testing different AI tools to figure out which ones are best for you. So if you'd like to learn more, you can start by clicking right here.